Now that we've covered how to search for and select specific U.S. government securities in TWS watch lists, let's now turn our attention to U.S. corporate bonds, another popular fixed income instrument. The process of adding corporate bonds to your monitor is similar to that for U.S. Treasuries, but instead of typing U.S.-T, you'll start by entering the stock ticker of the issuing company's parent. In this example, we'll use the ticker symbol for Deere & Co., or DE. When we type DE into a cell and hit enter, the contract selection menu will be displayed. All listings associated with the symbol DE will then be listed, but you'll want to look carefully before making a selection. For instance, you'll see shares in Deere are listed primarily on the New York Stock Exchange, the top selection. And they also trade on both EBS, and the same DE ticker symbol is also assigned to another company listed on Canada's Venture Exchange. You'll want to note that these are all equity-related selections while we're searching for a U.S. corporate debt security. You also want to note that the DE symbol is also assigned to the country of Germany, and selecting government fixed income from the menu would list outstanding German government debt in euros. The correct selection is listed under corporate fixed income. Click that selection to display the contract selection tool. If you widen the issuer column, you'll see all the subsidiaries whose debt is listed in TWS. If you click on the top level Deere & Co., the display will populate all outstanding bonds by that issuer. Notice that the list of filters also activates. These filters only appear when an entity is selected. You can see how the available listing changes if another issuer is selected from the filter. In our previous lesson, we mentioned that the filters column might also display a currency selection menu. This specific ticker is a great example of the care you should take in locating bonds. At the top level of Deere & Co., note the information displayed about the listing of bonds. This reflects the issuer, type, exchange, and currency. You can see that each of the listed bonds is in U.S. dollars, and there is no currency filter listed in the left column. That's because this issuer, Deere & Co., has only issued U.S. dollar-denominated bonds. However, if I select the next entity, John Deere Canada Funding, Inc., the display lists only bonds denominated in Canadian dollars. Again, there is no currency filter. There are more U.S. dollar bonds under John Deere Capital Corp., but none of these has issues in more than one currency. For other corporate bonds, let's say for example the Walt Disney Company, you will see the currency filter when the entity issues in multiple currencies. In this case, the filter can be applied to display only bonds denominated in that currency. Let's now return to Deere & Co. and make a selection. As with Treasury, simply highlight the bond you wish to add to the monitor and click Apply and OK when done. The monitor now reflects the bonds that have been added, and when clicked, the bond will display in Charts, Order Entry, or any other color-linked panel. We'll discuss Charts and Order Entry in a later lesson. For now, you should be able to enter the ticker for any underlying security and locate available corporate bonds. However, if you are very familiar with the instruments you wish to add to your display, you may know the QCIP of the bond or its unique identifier. If you do, simply type it into TWS and hit enter. For example, if you input QCIP number 459200AS0, you'll see an IBM bond with a 6.5% coupon maturing in 2028. When you add the IBM bond QCIP to your monitor, you will also notice that this number populates the QCIP column rather than its IBCID identifier. You may also locate IBCID numbers from the IBKR website page under the Products menu by selecting Product Listings and then Bonds. If you do not know the underlying stock ticker for a corporate name, try typing it into the monitor. Let's use Dollar General as an example. If I type the name and hit Enter, the Search dialog box will appear. All instances of Dollar General are returned and are grouped by stocks and bonds. If I deselect by clicking on the checkbox everything but the bond selection, the result is the bond issuer I was looking for. Highlight the choice and click OK to open the contract selection box. Available bonds for Dollar General are listed, and you may now filter by maturity or coupon if you wish. Add any bond to the monitor display by clicking Add and OK when finished. With the monitor now configured to enable us to better view bond market data, let's walk through how to locate the description of a bond. To demonstrate, let's use a 3.5% Dollar General bond maturing in 2030. 
To find out more about this specific instrument, right-click on the ticker symbol and locate the expansion arrow for financial instrument info in the floating menu. You may choose details for a web display listing of details or description for a pop-up of information within TWS, which, among other details, will reveal the bond's payment frequency, whether it's convertible, whether it has any call option provisions, as well as the sector, industry, and category it's associated with. Lastly, you can change the settings for bonds by configuring TWS to be displayed in actual dollar amounts or by thousands of dollars denoted by the letter K for thousands. To do this, use the File drop-down menu to access Global Configuration. Click the Expand sign next to the Display menu and click on Ticker Row. You'll see here that you can choose between the two display settings. We'll dive more deeply into searching for fixed income instruments in our next lesson, where we'll cover how to use our global bond scanner, as well as learn a bit about our advanced market scanner. But at this point, you should now be able to easily locate bonds in the Mosaic Monitor panel by QSIP, as well as by Maturity, Coupon, Currency, and more. Thank <laughs> you.